Good morning, physical science students. A lot of you have helped uh, ask for help on the waves on a string lab. Um, that's lab 7.1, especially on question eight, where you need to um, use the step forward button to collect data and make a ta data table of time, vertical and horizontal positions of the same green ball on the string. There are green balls in the string. We'll look at that in the middle. Um, we, and then we need to make observations of when the green ball is above and below the midline. So let's look at this here. Here is the FET waves on a string. This is in your lab. Um, I have checked. I'm in oscillate mode up here in the upper left hand corner. I have a fixed end here. I've turned on the rulers. And I also need to turn on a timer. I'm going to pick the third green ball here. And I'm going to measure the distance I moved my ruler. It came up here. And you can move it. I'm going to put the zero on top, always on top of the green ball. And I'm going to measure the distance between the green ball and the orange line. In this case, it's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and halfway between 0.4 and 0.6. So we'll call that between point, we'll call that 0.5. Let's go over to our lab sheet. We can put time 0.00. .00. We can put vertical distance 0 0.5. And we know it's centimeters. That's already labeled. And now we need to look at the horizontal distance. That green ball is from the beginning or from the oscillator. So let's do that horizontal distance. We'll scoot our vertical distance ruler over there. Our horizontal distance is going to be from the edge of the oscillator here. I'll put the zero right there. and. I'm going to bring that down until it meets with my green ball. And I can see if I look at the middle of the green ball, it's right at 2.4. Let's line that up just perfectly. Yep, it's at 2.4 centimeters. Here's the one centimeter. You can't see it very well. Here's two centimeters. Here's 2.2 and here's 2.4. So we can go write that on our table, 2.4 centimeters. A note that it's helpful to have a little bit of amplitude here. Um, I wouldn't max it out, but kind of be into the middle upper range of amplitude and kind of in the middle of the range of frequency. If your frequency or your amplitude are too low, it's hard to detect changes. Um, so now we want to turn on our timer. We want to step forward in time here. And if you don't know how to turn on the timer, it's right here. I'll step forward in time a little bit here. I'm still at 2.4, so I can do the horizontal right away. And then I'm going to move that horizontal ruler away, and I'll do the vertical distance. It hasn't really moved much. It's still at about 0.5. So I'm gonna the next time I measure, I'm gonna advance the time. I'm gonna advance it a little bit more so we can see a visible change. And the time here is zero point, it's one one hundredth of a second here. So it hasn't had much chance to move here. So let's advance it a little bit here. We can see now that it's just under 0.2 here. And I'd say it's about 0.26. Zero point two six. 
Let's look at the time. That's 0.18 seconds. 0 0.18 seconds. Let's put time in seconds here. And then let's measure the horizontal distance. We'll scoot that ruler right up to the oscillator here so the zero matches up there and it's still at 2.4. It's not going anywhere. It's a transverse wave. So think about do particles go anywhere on a transverse wave? Um, if we talk, When we talked about stadium waves as a transfer of waves, everybody just sits up, uh, stands up, and then sits down in their chair in a stadium wave. You as a person in a stadium wave don't go anywhere, and that's the same with the particle. I'm going to put a negative on all of these to indicate that they're below the line. Think about it as a number line in mathematics. Um, if you think of it, the orange line is the zero in the number line in mathematics, and anything below the orange line is going to be negative, and anything above the orange line is going to be positive. So let's go get a positive measurement here. I'll advance it a little bit more. We'll move the ruler. We're going to advance this until this green dot here, this green bead, goes above the orange line. Now we need to measure. Remember, we're pu always putting our measurement, we're measuring where the top of the green bead is. So it's 0 .4, 0 0.2, it's right at 0.4. So now it's 0 0.4, and that's positive um, because it's above the orange line. This was below the orange line. That's kind of the, that would be equivalent to the, the zero in the middle of the number line in math. Let's get the time here. 0 0.3 seconds. And let's get a horizontal distance here. I'm going to move our vertical ruler over I'm again going to put, I'm going to do my best to put this at the edge of the oscillator. And look, it's right at 2.4 again, which makes sense because it's a transfer of wave. The particles don't go anywhere. They, they don't go anywhere in the horizontal distance. They just go up and down like people in a stadium wave. When you do the wave in a stadium, you just stand up and sit back down exactly in the same place. You don't move. Um, in a longitudinal direction, just a vertical direction. So this is still 2.4 centimeters. When you're all done here, um, keep clicking through, measure it a little bit more at the top, make sure that's positive. Click through a little bit more, measure it again. Let it go below the line, let it go below the orange line, measure it again. And keep putting those numbers in your data table until your data table is full. Don't use my numbers, use your own, because the numbers are going to be different depending on which bead you choose, what your frequency and your amplitude are. So when your table's all full, come over here to the Google uh, Waffle, and you want to select Google Sheets. Pull up a blank Google Sheet, and we're going to copy and paste the um, data from our lab into a Google Sheets here. Let's go back over to our lab. I just put in garbage data, so don't use this data. It's garbage. It will not get you any points. It's just an example. So that um, will copy and paste quite nicely into some reason this isn't working so well. There we go. Um, it will copy and paste into Google Sheets just great. And this is how you're going to make your graphs. Okay. 
in part B here that's worth 20 points, so it's definitely worth doing. It says make graphs of the vertical position versus time and the horizontal position, position versus time. So I'm going to go over to Google Sheets here. In Google Sheets, I'm going to highlight both, uh, both columns, both time and the vertical distance here. I'm going to insert a chart and we'll see what we come up with. My chart is all over the place, but I'm guessing you're going to see something that you could probably connect the dots into to make a smooth wave. Um, if you have enough dots and they're close, close enough together, um, you're going to get a wave pattern. And that's how, that's the correct way to do this. When you put in garbage data, you get garbage graphs. I'm going to, you should keep this one and you should um, copy and paste this to your lab sheet. We can do that here. Your lab sheet might not be black. I'm in dark mode right now. So I'm going to make that go away for now. Then I'm going to highlight time and the horizontal distance. Oops. We'll just move time over here. And we'll highlight both of those columns. Sometimes you have to click out in order to highlight both of them. And then quick move to the side really quickly to highlight both columns. Then we can go insert, chart, and see what we get here. You can see that um, that horizontal distance didn't change at all. We can add a line to this chart um, using some of the tools over here. There are different types of charts um, in this menu right here. But you're going to see you can draw a straight line because that horizontal distance from the oscillator the distance from here to the green bead is never going to change. So that's how to do parts of the waves on a string lab. You can copy and paste that second graph here under B. Um, answer how do graphs help you understand the characteristics of waves. And you can predict how the graphs would look if you increase the damping. Um, and then you can test that effect. Damping, of course, is this tool right here. You can see if we turn down the damping or what happens if we turn up the damping. So I'll let you think about that. And then you have some test your understanding questions to answer and then you're done with the lab. So please hand it in to um, the 7.1 assignment. Thanks so much. This is Dr. B signing off from Waves on a String.